Okay, so here we are, and we are continuing to prepare for physics with electric fields. Now, we went over unit conversions. The next thing that you need to know and you need to know how to do in order to be able to use electric fields is vectors. So let's talk about vectors. Yes, there's a very good chance that you did vectors in your previous physics course. Hopefully, you use vectors for position, velocity, acceleration, force, momentum, Trying to think of another one. I think, well, technically towards the vector, but you may not have used it that way. But that's okay. I'll let that slide. Okay, so let's just start from the beginning and let's look at the position vector. Suppose I have some point here on an xy axis and I want to find out where it is. <clears throat> this particular point has an x coordinate of 1 and a y coordinate of 2. I just picked those arbitrarily. It doesn't really matter. And, and in fact, it totally doesn't matter because I can move my coordinate system somewhere else and have a different value. So um, position doesn't really isn't really absolute. It depends on your coordinate system. So one way that I can represent that location is with the position vector. So I'll draw a vector from the origin to my point and I'll call that the vector R. Okay. And so the, the textbook I'm going to be using, it writes vectors in the following way. It would say R equals 1 x hat plus 2 y hat plus zero z hat meters. Okay, so what this says, x hat is what's called a unit vector in the x direction. It's a vector of length one and no units, but points in the x direction. So this one x hat is actually a vector right here. It's this vector, one x hat. And two z hat is this vector. It's a vector in the y direction with a magnitude of 2. And so you see if I add 1 x hat plus 2 y hat, I do get that vector. Plus 0 z hat. We're not doing in the z direction, but that is there, and it is important, especially when we get to the magnetic field. We really need three dimensions. So that's how we do that. Um, so let me just say this x hat is called a unit vector. And we're going to look at those in physics. We, they're, they're one way to deal with the, the situations that we have, and they're very helpful. And they're very confusing. I understand that. So if we practice using them, I think that you'll start to understand how they work. Now, some other books may write this as R equals 1 I hat plus 2 J hat plus 0 K hat meters. Notice that we still have units on a vector. If it's a position vector, it has to have units. You can't just leave that off. Um, and so I put the parentheses around there to realize that each component has units. They all have the same units. This i hat, j hat, k hat is exactly the same as x hat, y hat, z hat. It's just a, you know, trendier way of saying it. So I don't want to use x's, that's too, that's, that's just for, you know, normal people. I want to be cool, make it look cooler. Fine. Okay, so next we have one other way to write this vector. And this is the way that I prefer. It's my favorite textbook does it this way. Uh, it says, it writes it like this, r equals angle bracket 1 comma 2 comma 0 closed angle bracket meters. So this is my x hat, y hat, z hat components and it just is a more compact notation so you don't have to write it all as that addition of stuff. It means the exact same thing. Okay, <clears throat> let's do the first thing, add vectors. So suppose I want to add two vectors. Let's say I, I go, um, I, I have that position and I want to add another position. So let's say I take that R1 and I want to have R2 is uh, negative 2, 3, 0 meters. Then what's R1 plus R2? It's just going to be, I add the X components, I add the Y components, I add the Z components. And, and that's why we write vectors in component form like that. You know, there is another notation for writing a vector. You could say it has a magnitude of, you know, whatever that is at some angle, but it's not very useful. It's hard to deal with that way. So if I have this, I have 1 plus negative 2 is negative 1, 2 plus 3 is 5, 0 plus 0 is 0 meters. And I can't add those vectors if they don't have the same units. It's not possible. Also, I can't add a scalar to a vector. That's not possible. Okay, so I can do that. Now let's look at 
uh, the displacement vector. So let's let's just jump into uh, part of what we're going to do for the electric field. So suppose I have a charge here plus Q, and then I want to find the electric field at some other location over here. Okay, so I could call this the vector, the position vector R Q, and this is my position vector R observation, and I want to find this vector because that's what the electric field depends on R. That's my displacement vector. In kinematics, you would call that delta R. It's your change in R. But in this case, R is if I subtract vectors and I want to find the change, this is just going to be uh, R observation minus R of the charge. So that's all I have to do. So if I Again, if I have x, y, z coordinates for this, x, y, z coordinates for that, I just subtract them. I subtract the components. And you can see here that this is the same as uh, <clears throat> negative addition, but I won't go into that. Hopefully this is just a review. Um, a couple other things that we can do with vectors. Uh, I could multiply by a scalar. I'm not going to have a real vector here, but let's say I have a equals 3. Change my line between a 2 and a 3 in the middle of that. 2. 3, 1, and I have some scalar factor of 2. Then I can write S times A is just going to be this 2 times each of those components. So it would be 4, 6, 2. And then whatever the units are that they multiply together. Magnitude. How do you find a magnitude of a vector? So if I have this vector right here, I can find the magnitude of R1. Uh, the magnitude is just the length of the vector. So it's just like Pythagorean theorem that we have x squared plus y squared equals z squared, which actually works c squared, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It actually works in three dimensions too, so I can write this as the square root of rx squared plus ry squared plus rz squared. Right there. So if I do that right here, the magnitude of this vector, r1, feel like I'm blocking, is going to be equal to uh, the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 0 squared. So it's going to be the square root of 5, and then it does the meter squared, but I take the square root and I get meters. The magnitude of a vector is always positive because you're taking the square root and we just take the positive values. Uh, unit vector. Okay, so what if I want to find a vector in the direction of this? That's what we call the unit vector. I'm not going to do it the long way. I'm just going to, because we don't really need to do it all the way. But I want to, I want to show you what it, how it works. I'm going to use that same 1, 2, 0 vector. <clears throat> so R, 1, 2, 0, 0. Meters. And I need the magnitude. R magnitude is the square root of 5. We already said that. R hat is a vector in the same direction as that. But it has a magnitude of 1, and that's it. Okay. So I can find that by taking my normal vector R and divide by the magnitude of R. So if I did that in this case, if I divide this vector by the square root of 5, I get the vector. 1 over the square root of 5, comma, 2 over the square root of 5, comma, 0. No units, because that's meters divided by meters, they cancel. Now, if you go back and find the magnitude of this vector, you know what you get? You know what you get. You know what you get? 1. Right, because I'm, I just, when I square these things, I get the, these squared plus that squared is 5, squared, and then take the square root, and then I divide by the square root, so I get, I get back to 1. Okay, I think that's good for vectors. I think we'll stop right there with vectors. Um, next up is the electric field.